Welcome, and thank you for joining me for some Pathfinder Kingmaker. We have been kind of exploring the old Sycamore location, and we've kind of uh, taken on this bottom portion of the map. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and explore a little bit more here, and then I, I think, depending on what we run into here, we may head back out to the world map and maybe... Um, travel back to Temple of the Elk and see if we can do anything against those monsters there now that we're a little bit higher level. But um, Let's go ahead and do a little bit more walking around this area. Kind of just curious about what we're going to find here. We've run into several different animals. Some thylacines and some giant frogs. Some mites. Not sure what else we're gonna run into here. I was looking at the journal and I I was reminded that Kessel, who we met when we entered this location, was interested in finding Tartuccio. So we haven't been out to the map to see if I don't I think he gave us a new location for Tartuccio, but I'm uh, curious to see. Uh, like, <laughs> we're so close to them. And they really can't see us, apparently. What you want? Blood for Gorum! To be literally, like, right on top of them before they acknowledge our existence. So far, everything here has been pretty manageable Let's see Ragongar, why don't you wait till after that wolf moves oh, or after Amiri I guess I wonder why it did that, it seemed like we were putting him in front of her He's got some damage behind his hits sometimes. Repent. Still haven't tried Harem's summon ability. I'm anxious to see how that works. See if we can take care of these wolves without any issues. Octavia seems to do well with that first sneak attack with the bow. Serves you right. After that, not necessarily. So I wonder if there's she gets a bonus to her attack roll on that on this sneak attack. I need to I need to read some things like how that sneak attack mechanic works. Your life ebbs low. We can do it. We'll keep just kind of whacking away at this wolf. This is for you. Nice. Well, that was pretty good on her part. You can skin these wolves. Okay. We took care of some wolves. Um, I think let's kind of head back toward the center of the map here. We had this upper area that we couldn't climb up to from over here. I wonder if we can get up there from another direction. Possibly. Let's kind of work our way around this way. 
a dryad token. We've got a few of those, I think. Oh boy. Lonely Shambling Mound. Uh. <laughs> what are you doing here, buddy? Besides shambling around. I don't want to attack it, necessarily. We just leave him be. What happened to these people? Body of a woman fouled beyond recognition. Her fingers still clench a torn leather leash. No stopping now. That's interesting. So if we uh, click on this guy, oh, <laughs> okay, uh, not sure we wanted to do that. I guess the icon showed sword, but I was hoping maybe we could talk to this thing. He wasn't really bothering us. I guess now we're fighting. Um, about some acid. Got quite a bit of HP. Here I am. Maybe this is time to try your summon monster. We can summon dogs. Summons one D three, so I take that one, two, or three dogs. Or a wolf. Three dogs. Let's just see what the wolf no actually oh what? Oh, were we like I guess we can't do that yet. Um well, can we just attack? What a waste. Huh? Let's see, how about Can we frighten it? Uh, it's immune. Okay, why don't you move over here a little bit. Lindsay, let's, let's inspire some courage. Okay, and Amiri, a little bit worried about your health although that let's see is she the one she's right there let's drink this potion just in case and do we maybe even put on defensive fighting I think we do yeah your health is even lower what was this? Oh, the Wand of Lead Blades. That buffs our weapon. Let's put on some either armor or shield. It gives a plus four armor bonus. Plus four shield bonus. I wonder what the difference is. Is this more for Negates magic missile attacks. Let's put this on. Oh, we can put that on anybody. This is just on ourselves.
Well, Octavia, uh, anything that we're missing here could, could enlarge someone. Gamiri. Okay, now, Harem, let's see. Can you summon your wolf? And maybe you can slightly move out of here. How come that wolf didn't get to go? Maybe you can't take a turn on the same turn you summoned. He was, he was immune to the fear, probably immune to hypnotism as well. Um, try to jolt. It's immune. Lindsay, I guess you can just take a crossbow shot. You deserved it. Uh, probably shouldn't have this on. Oh. Survive. I always survive. Ooh, that hurt. Mound uses combat maneuver grapple. Jeez. Alright. Uh, this might not turn out so well. we we'll pull out all the stops if we can. we used would have been nice to have the cure moderate wounds now do you have cure light wounds she's minus three we could maybe revive her She'll probably get attacked again but we can't reach why not oh. For a second there, I thought we accidentally healed the mound. <laughs> but no, that was Amiri. Okay. Yeah, I wish we could crowd control this somehow. Flare. Oh. Can't really... I don't think we can get it with fire without hitting anybody else. Try grave touch, but we have to get close. Maybe enfeeble. No. Oh, we did hit that with that. It is enfeebled. Okay. She's all out of healing. So I guess we just take a shot. Can't tell if, I guess. Does this have a attack of opportunity? Could try to stand up. Uh. 
All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to reload. Okay, well, we didn't even need to attack that thing. I kind of want to leave this area. But most of what we've encountered has been at or below our level. Uh, let's see what else we find up here without bothering that shambling mound for now. I think we could probably manage it if we were rested and had all our abilities. My search was not in vain. Let's just re-scout this area without interfering with whatever that thing's doing. Oh, last time we didn't collect anything here. Lab journal. Went into the woods, found many roots, pine cones, flowers, and a dead squirrel. Scant little I can make of that. I must consider where I might gain rarer ingredients for my experiments. Some damnable raccoons got into the hut while I was exploring the woods. Broke all the glassware. The only things left are ten flat bottom glass tubes, five round bottom flasks, a couple porcelain mortars, three pestles, and the precious spiral. A good thing all the pots are still there. So many good chemicals wasted. Shame. Need to lock everything up in the closet. Tried to finish the experiment today, the one I started at the old lab. Used the lead powder from the master's box. At the crystallization stage, the liquid foamed, changed color, and formed a, a deposit. Another unsuccessful experiment, and I have all but exhausted my supply of essential materials. Caught a raccoon with a snare trap. Didn't get the bastard to the HUD in time. Perhaps I should... I wish I could just scroll these on the other screen. Uh, perhaps I should ask some hunters for help in catching experimental subjects. But I must save money, and besides, I see how those bumpkins scowl at me. As if I've grown horns. Third attempt at the crystallization experiment. Broke the last round bottom flask. I recall my tutor calling me ham-handed and making me clean up. Perhaps he was right. But he did teach me much, despite everything. But why didn't he wish me to develop my abilities? Didn't he want me to learn anything beyond the basic potion recipes? He kept saying I wasn't ready, but in truth he feared the students were passing the teacher. And for good reason. I shall prove this process works. I'll prove it to everyone. Today an old lady came from the nearby village asking me to make her goats yield more milk. I had to help. I'm in desperate need of money. Oh, why must I spend my time so? Boring, boring, boring. Several pages remain empty. Then the writings continue. Observation day one. Finally, I finally got a chance I can't miss. I found a dying elf in the woods. She was barely breathing, and the ants were swarming all over her. Who is she? What happened to her? It matters not. This is the opportunity I've been waiting for. With great effort, I managed to drag her to the hut, remove her clothes, and hide her behind the bags in the corner. Enough wasting my talents on trifles. It's time for action. I used the largest glass tube from the master's box, the one with the warning, in case of contact with skin, wash off immediately. Ha, the doddering parrot of all the standard warnings. I spread it evenly over her body and began my observations. Observation day three. The subject has survived. Had to tie her up and gag her. The moaning could attract unwanted attention. Her skin is changing, but it's hard to determine the precise character of these changes. The early stages of festering, perhaps? The treated areas do smell faintly. Ugh. Observation day five. The changes continue faster and faster. The epidermis has festered away. Is this her experiment? <laughs> The joints are grown swollen, tough and calloused, and the subject has a fever. Observation day nine. Over the past few days, the subject's legs 
came covered with mildew and moss. Her fingers and toes grow long and crooked, as though she would grow into the ground. I shall move the subject outside. The experiment now demands sunlight. Observation day 13. The body's changes are so significant it's impossible to recall the creature's original appearance from the way it looks now. A seething growth covers the whole body's surface. Yep. Every day I find new kinds of moss, mildew, grass, and other plants. The subject attempts to move. I had to immobilize her. I try to make contact, but she utters inarticulate sounds alike to howling. Might intelligence be restored at a further stage of regeneration? Observation day 18. Subject has grown larger several times. She is now strangely quiet these last few days. I'm beginning to worry. In the end, I see I've become attached to her. She will make me famous. Observation day 25. My living experiment shows all signs of obedience. She is much like a little tree, a magnificent walking tree. She is already eight feet tall and the child keeps growing. I wish to give her space, more fresh air and sunlight. I suspect we shall need some fertilizer. For now, I only walk her around the woods on a leash. This is the greatest... She was holding a leash. This is the greatest achievement of my career. Soon we'll be ready for a journey to Absalom, and there, there I will, I will present my masterpiece. I must think of a name for my girl. Interesting. Got a chain shirt. So she brought her experiment out here on a leash. Her experiment maybe just got tired of being on a leash. She doesn't seem too mad now, as long as we don't attack her. Huh. Well, we are going to avoid interacting with her for now. We do have some thylacines here, it looks like. I wonder if they're going to go after the tree. Octavia. You do some damage on this one. Uh, acid or bow? That's bow. Uh. Like we have five of them again. Amiri, I don't like this one that's back here behind the front line. We just take care of it. Oh. Lindsay, she's gonna get hit if she moves. Let's inspire some competence. Everybody's sort of low health here, which doesn't help things. Ragongar, you... <sighs> Let's put some armor on. Yourself. Oh, you're gonna get... Well, that could have been bad. So you can st still get an attack. Oh, nice. I don't quite have the difference in some of these movements. Like free, swift, standard. I need to pay more attention to see what, like, he was able to cast that spell and still get, get an attack. Where some things use the full movement, I guess. I need to watch that more closely and pay more attention to that. Um, maybe we want our... How about... How about th three dogs? 
to help us with these. Let's put them behind their lines. We just got one dog. Okay. Let's try some hypnotism. Did they all save on that? Maybe two of them did and two of them didn't. Okay. Those two are hypnotized. Let's let's kind of move this way. Maybe we can get in over here with some fire. Okay, Octavia. How about a telekinetic fist on one of these? Let's do this one. Miri, see if you can finish this one off. Nice. And Lindsay. Let's do some damage on this one. Gongar. Can you reach this one? Let's see if we can prove our accuracy. No attack. We don't get to control our summon, looks like. That's okay. Here I am, finish this, this one off. Okay. I think, why don't you just throw some acid? Octavia, let's do the fist again. Over here, no, here. Mary, take this one out, please. Thank you. And Lindsay, you've got this one. There we go. Get some skins. Okay. We're gonna say goodbye to our lonely shambling mound for now. It is done. Try to remember she's here. This is where we tried to climb up and couldn't. We actually took quite a bit of damage trying to do that and failing. No stopping now. We got a coal. Oh, it's a kobold lying on the ground that we can speak to. It looks like oh, there's several of them. What do we have here? Kobold dragon shaman. A kobold lying in the middle of the patch calls out to you. Judging by the sorry state of his scales, he is the eldest of the group. His red eyes squint from the light, and his throat struggles to form words. Our patch, our celestial radish, they get trampled by the mound. Yike, yik, radishes. We grew them back in my village. One day, while I was reading a book, my paw grabbed it from me and threw it into the fire. 
Then he made me go pick radishes. I we threw the book into the fire. It was autumn and the ground was wet and cold and there were worms everywhere. Ugh, filthy roots. <laughs> huh. Um, let me just try to grab some of those radishes. Finding the right moment, you quietly leave the patch with a sizable bunch of radishes in your hand. Gobolds pay you no heed. Oh, was that what uh, Bakken was looking for? I think it was Moon something. Yeah, Moon Radishes. Nice. Okay. Onwards. Anything else over here? Well, that means I think I know what I want to do next. Since we got those, let's make our way back out to the world map. And I think we're, we're going to travel back to Oleg's then. Deliver those radishes. See what that gives us. Maybe he'll give us another discount. And then we can rest there and stock up before we maybe go try the Temple of the Elk again. Anything that's worth grabbing? We're already at medium, so I guess it wouldn't hurt to just collect that stuff and sell it. Since we're headed back to the trading post anyway. That's quite the sword. <laughs> That was the old second word. Pine Patch. I don't remember seeing that before. An isle of pine forest in the grassy sea of the Shrike Hills, one can only assume that in the past, the northern border of the Narl Marches laid further east, and this grove is the last witness of those days. Um, that Maybe that appeared before and I just didn't notice it. I wonder if that's potentially where Tartuccio is hiding. Anything else new on here? Don't see anything else. Maybe we can take a couple of these unexplored paths back toward the trading post. I was really hoping we would run across more of, of uh, Tartuccio's party. There are a couple of people with him that I thought might make com better companions for our team, but maybe that's not to be it is done. for now. Or we need to find them somewhere else. Yeah, so Bakken, we found some radishes about those tasks. Is this the radishes you were looking for? Bakken's face brightens and he rubs his sides in satisfaction. Yes, that's it. Hey, there's even more than I expected here. Thank you so much. Take this. You deserve it. 200 gold, 150 experience. Oh, would you buy more? Sorry, my friend, but after you took a walk through that cave, there's nary a spider left. So now it's safe enough for me to gather the berries myself rather than pay someone else any time I need to cook dinner or make a potion. And that bucket of moon radishes will be plenty for me. Ahem, for me to help Oleg for a long time to come, I mean. 
Yeah, what are you doing with those? That's for Oleg. He sprained his back last summer, you see. Tried to move a heavy chest all by himself. Uh, that's never a good idea. You can't even imagine the healing powers of these radishes. They make a great pain-killing ointment. Potent, exquisite. I just... <laughs> Oleg would never confess his weakness to anybody, but I see him wince every time he bends over to pick something up. The old man sighs a bit too loudly. Oh, when will the poor man realize he's not 15 anymore? It sucks to get old, that's for sure. So you're not going to give us an additional discount, apparently. We'll be back to uh, discuss supplies that we might need. What did I do there? Okay, we crossed one more thing off. Amiri wants a, another monster. I guess she'll tell us when we find the right one. Okay, so I would think we're probably back at attempting the monsters at the Temple of the Elk. I have a theory, two theories about those. Well, three. <laughs> if you count the third one being, I have no idea how to beat them. Uh, and we need something that we haven't run across yet or discovered. Uh, but the others is maybe... Maybe just the wolves have to be beaten before the boar can be killed. So maybe we try to kill the wolves first. The other is that maybe we need to draw them up away from the mist. So there's there's kind of that upper area where we fought the bear-like tree ant. So maybe we could like draw draw the boar up on those steps, and if it's out of the mist a little bit, maybe it can be killed that way. Maybe we'll try those Ocestins oh, here. Cool. Before you stands, uh, I think I called him Kessel earlier. <laughs> Keston. Before you stands a heavy set man with a grim, determined features. His weathered face is crossed by several scars, yet they do little to Mara's appearance. His gaze is heavy, but he avoids eye contact, as if afraid of unwittingly sharing whatever burden weighs so heavily upon him. We already talked to him about all these things. I wonder if he's gonna if he's able to join us on our adventures now. We already talked about all that. Let's go upstairs. Could we haven't talked to these two completely. Let's talk to Octavia this time. <laughs> Go away. Oh, right. Tell us about your childhood. Too little. Some scraps of memories, no more than that. What exactly do you remember? Nothing special, some images of a faraway past, that's all. I do remember wooden table legs, the paint on them was peeling off, and I was standing on my toes, trying to peek at what was on the table. I remember the wild rose by the window, it kept me up at night, scratching the glass with its gnarled branchlets. I do remember my mother's blue dress, it was a trifle battered, but it smelled of lavender. I guess that's all, not much there, right? All those memories, it's like they're not mine at all. I recall some images, and I know I should feel something about them, but I don't remember what exactly I should feel. So let them rot in a swamp with tatzel worms. My life's good enough without them. What about your parents? You're a half-elf? Am I? 
You know, I think you might be right. I'm rather slim and tall, and I can see well in dim light. She raises her hands and touches her ears. Aha, they're a bit pointy. Yes, I defi I'm definitely a half-elf. Hmm, let's think about that logically. So my mother was an elf, and my father was a human. Is she just <laughs> being sarcastic here, or... Or maybe it was the other way around, and my mother was a... Yeah. So that's it. Now you know as much about my parents as I do. Do you remember how you were enslaved? I clearly, clearly remember the man who took me away from my home. He was big, with a huge pot belly and shaggy beard. I was afraid he would eat me. Anyway, he didn't stay with me long. He gave me to his slaver accomplices, and I never saw him again. When my mother was giving me to him, she was crying. I can still barely hear her quiet voice, but I can't recall her words or her face behind the tears. Just that lavender smell. It tickled my nose, and I wanted to sneeze. Did my mother sell me into slavery? But then why was she crying? And if she didn't want me to be a slave, why didn't she try to save me? One more riddle from my past that I don't care to solve. It must be horrible being unable to recall your childhood. Oh, I recall my childhood in rather bright details. It was spent in dirty barracks. I wore flea-infested rags and slept on a straw mattress instead of a proper bed. Though I understand what you mean. You know, to be honest, I'm not sure I want to remember my childhood before slavery. If I could remember what I lost, it would probably just bring me more pain. Octavia shakes her head several times and makes herself smile again, so it's good that I don't remember much of anything. What about your life in slavery? I don't like to recall it, but if you insist... The slavers from the Technic League tried to ruin my life, but all they could do was ruin my childhood. How did you find yourself in the Stolen Lands? My enslavers from the Technic League funded a large expedition into the Stolen Lands. A hundred agents, tens of slaves, wagons. We were to reach for some ancient artifacts or ancient ruins. Our group never made it to the Technic League hideout. Along the way, it was attacked by the future owner of the Stolen Lands himself and I'll be forever grateful to him for it. Talking about us. Did you have many masters over the years? Yes, many of them. Some owned, owned me for years. Others felt they'd had enough of me in a couple of months. Trust me, I did all I could to make every master eager to get rid of me. A slave that's trained in magic is a rather expensive thing, so they wouldn't kill me. At least that was my, that was the hope. So I drooled and played an idiot, and I listened as every new master argued with my former one, trying to return me. Sometimes I punctured the pages of magic books I was forced to copy with a quill. Other times I pretended to mix up the spells, so instead of lighting a magic torch, I set dozens of dancing lights floating just below the ceiling. Of course, most of these tricks of mine usually ended badly. I got punished on a regular basis. My back still remembers the master's whips, though all my scars from those times are long gone. Where did you learn to use magic? Oh, I was taught magic by Janish of Starfell, one of the most famous wizards in Numeria. I think Ragongar talked about Janish. Maestro Janish, as he insisted on calling himself. Octavia's voice overflows with contemptuous sarcasm. Anyone would be happy to learn from such a great master, and only a talentless bitch like me would dare to reject his teachings and indulge in her laziness. At least that's what Maestro Janish used to re repeat constantly while whipping knowledge into my back. The great Maestro was a big fan of punishment. Octavia's lips press into a thin line. The Technic League didn't care if a few slaves died under the master's whip, as long as Maestro Janish provided an arcane trained one in return. Officially, there's no slavery in Numeria, but the Technic League is above any law. A slave with an aptitude for the arcane is worth much more than a regular one. The slave's repertoire is limited to the simplest and safest spells, of course. Have you ever tried to run away? 
What a silly question. Of course I tried. As soon as we saw even the tiniest opportunity to get free, Reg and I grabbed for it. On one occasion, we jumped from the cart into the river. There was a time when we spent weeks trying to dismantle the far wall of the barracks and make a path out. Sometimes we attacked our guards when they least expected it. We craved freedom. We lived only to dream about it. Those short days, sometimes weeks, that we spent on the run were the happiest days of my life. We used to hide in the woods or blend in with the crowd on the streets of Starfell. Starfall. Midnight stars were our guiding lights, and we shared our dream with them to reach the river kingdoms. For in these lands there were neither slaves nor masters. We were starving and freezing, but that was the real life. Too bad it usually ended too soon. The Technic League agents always found us in the end. I don't, I don't know how they managed to do it. They probably used magic, or maybe it was just our fate. They whipped us and returned us to our old masters, or sold us to new ones. If the old ones refused to pay. So we were slaves again, but the dream about the river kingdoms never left our hearts. <laughs> Have your masters ever hurt you? She kind of already said they did. You figured that out, didn't you? Or maybe you wanted to hear all about the beatings I've survived, the humiliations I've endured. Imagine the worst thing one person can do to another and multiply it tenfold. That's what happened to me nearly every day in slavery. Octavia stops you, gently touching her hand. Wait, I, I want to tell you. Technic League agents you rescued us from. Reg and I tried to run away many times, but they always managed to find us eventually. I have no reason to hope that this time they've lost track of us for good. So we might might have a run in with them again. Um make a deal with them. Never throw away valuable resources. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we won't let them take you again. Yes, we'll chase them to the border. We won't see them through the dust. Still, I'd like to find them first. <clears throat> Is that going to be a quest of hers? Why do you want to find them? I broke free from slavery. Thanks to you, I've obtained everything I dreamed of. My freedom and the opportunity to control my own life. I want to use this opportunity to fight the Technic League, at least the part of it that operates here in the Stolen Lands. I wish to free all the slaves from their Technic League masters. Octavia gives you a warm smile and gently touches your hand. I do believe that while we're together, we can achieve a lot, even this. I have to ask, how do you manage to look so gorgeous even when we're out in the middle of nowhere? Oh, so you've noticed. My appearance is the result of daily effort, and it's not easy. Do you know how much time it takes to create good makeup or to mend a dress, even with the help of magic? So if someday you wake up early, an hour before dawn or so, you can actually check on me. You'll see how I prepare myself for a new day. <laughs> yeah, you put a lot of effort into this, but the results make it worthwhile. You bet. You know I like to feel attractive, even while we're on the march. It feels so good to be a beauty in a group of barely washed and extremely reckless young gentlemen. You're my thorns and I'm your rose. <laughs> now go away. Uh, we won't do that. Um, it's amazing, after all your hardships, you still remain so cheerful and optimistic. I try not to view my life as a never-ending course of sufferings, 
Yes, I've had my share of hard times, but do I need to recall them? After all, along with the bad things, I had some good things as well. I had a dream and I followed it and eventually it came true. Following that path, I met Reg and you. Now I'm free and surrounded by friends. Well, it sounds like she's got a pretty good outlook. You worship Calistria? Yes. Many slaves survived only thanks to their faith. Some lived hoping for a day when a good deity would deliver them. Some even offered deals to the evil gods. But me and Reg, Calistria has taught us the most important things. Expect no gifts from above. Rely only on ourselves. Never forgive those who wronged us. But at the same time, savor every droplet of pleasure we could squeeze from our bleak days. Okay. Come anytime. All right, let's rest here. Get everybody recovered and freshened up. Give Octavia time to do her makeup. I wish we could uh, invite, what is his name? I want to keep wanting to say Kessel, Kessler. <laughs> Can I get back to that? Oh, we went through a lot of stuff with Octavia. Amiri's over there hitting that training dummy. Oh man, she's going at it. <laughs> Creston, Creston. All right, um, let's prepare for heading out. We need to sell some things. <clears throat> we can get rid of all this stuff. Cold iron dagger plus one. No, we don't need these. I don't think we need this club. Uh, that's worth 750 gold. Yeah. I don't think we need that. Sell that, sell that stuff. We're up to 3,000 gold. <clears throat> We've got some armor we can get rid of. Um, I wonder about giving Octavia. You know, we gave her that other armor. It was pretty heavy. I think it might have been medium armor. Maybe let's give her something lighter. And maybe somebody can wear this chain shirt. Uh, let's see then what else? Could sell this stuff. Oh, I didn't notice usable Assess accessories. There's just like, oh, here we go, other, okay. You can sell these pelts. You can sell this journal now, I think. Sell those, that, that, those, inkwell, spoon, earrings, turquoise, purse. I think we read this, did we? Agnes Bregan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read that. Earrings. I haven't noticed, like, when we camp, do we use this food? 
When Lindsay cooks a meal, I'll have to watch that next time we camp. that let's see oh thylacine pelts we can get rid of all those i think that's everything there okay i haven't seen anywhere like can we upgrade the weapons we have or we have to buy or find better weapons like Amiri's sword can that be upgraded somehow let's get everybody appropriately fitted out here now yeah so Octavia we gave her this leather armor with a 10 arcane spell failure chance. She's not, it's not like she's getting hit a bunch for the most part. Let's put this on instead. We want her spells to hit. But this, this light chain shirt, these are, Ragongar's already got that on. Amiri has medium armor on. Yeah. Uh, about Lindsay. She has some leather armor. Her, we want her spells to hit, though. I don't think. I don't think she, we want anything heavier on her. Harim has some medium armor on. So maybe we don't need either of these. We could sell those before we head out. Um, usable stuff. Let's see. Mage armor. Uh, maybe we can try this Call of Lightning scroll. Might be able to sell some of these scrolls actually. Doing okay with potions right now. Um, she's set up okay. Yeah, it'd be nice to like get her a, a better bow or upgrade the short bow. I think he's good there. Amiri could probably just have another potion on you. Lindsay, I think you're okay. And her M's good here, I think. So let's sell those two pieces of armor. Okay, well, let's go take a look where we want to go next. We'll get Follow me. ourselves prepared for that and then we'll probably end this episode. Yep. Yeah. What's his name? Oh, she's Kressel? Keston? Keston. Jeez. I wish we could use him. 
Okay. I think what I do want to do next time is return to the Temple of the Elk. What's our travel time there? Day. So we'll have to probably have to camp again before we get there. Let's see if we can make it there without getting interrupted. Can we avoid? Successfully evaded. Okay. So let's continue on. Get there without anyone getting fatigued. Takes a whole day, so yeah, we're probably gonna have to camp. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and camp. Yeah, everybody's tired. My jacket was all torn up, but someone mended it neatly last night. <laughs> probably Octavia. Thank you. Thank you. Although I am not worth such efforts. You're welcome. Uh, uh, I know the world may crumble to dust sooner or later, but meanwhile, your jacket can serve you a She's our little seamstress. It's good. Good. Oh yeah, I was going to check our inventory before we did that. No attacks. Okay. Well, we're going to stop here. Next time we'll be ready to uh, give this another attempt. See if we can be any more successful now that we've leveled up. And um, so I was wondering about maybe drawing them up here out of the mist a little bit. See if that potentially makes any difference. Um, or just trying the wolves first and seeing if if we can even... Maybe we can kill them and then the boar. I don't know. We'll try that next time. Thanks for watching. So glad to have you here. And I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.